In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so it begins. The sigh before the battle, the calm before the storm. And I think if we're going to be honest with ourselves and with the Scriptures, the storm of Holy Week is basically a hurricane. And yet from our reading that we had just in the back as the kids processed in with us today from John chapter 12, Palm Sunday doesn't look quiet at all. Jesus mounted on a braying donkey clopping up to the city of Jerusalem with kids and their parents and all the city coming out to see Him. Throwing out palm branches that they've cut from rustling trees. Their cloaks being thrown on the ground. And all the time, the rising song of the great Hosanna, Lord, save us! And Lord, save us now because that's what You've come for, isn't it? Is filling the air. And yet amidst all this excitement, amidst all the clamor, St. John reminds us that there's a plot behind it all. There are fearful priests, disgruntled Pharisees, politically aspiring Romans and fraying political tensions. Palm Sunday might seem like it's part of the greater narrative of the Passion, Monday, Thursday, and the Good Friday, but here from where we are right now, On Palm Sunday, we're just at the beginning. We're so far away from the events of Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. And to put it in perspective, just how much of the Scriptures, how much of the Gospels are taken up with these accounts, consider this. 29% of Matthew, 38% of Mark, 21% of the enormous book of Luke, and a whole whopping 43% of the Gospel of John all deal with the events from Maundy Thursday to the first proclamation of He has risen on Easter Sunday. And so here we are still really far away from the events that the Gospels are about to unfold. And yet Holy Week has begun. We're still four days away from when Judas hatches the plot to betray Jesus. We're five days away until He gives His last will and testament in His body and blood given and shed for His disciples, for you, for me, for the whole world. We're six days away from the nails and the whip and the rod. From the women who are screaming and mourning as if He'll never rise again. And we're a whole eight days away from the day He does exactly that. And yet here at the beginning, here on Palm Sunday, it's a mess. It's a mess of emotion. It's a mess of teaching and foreshadowing. It's a mess of misunderstanding. It's a mess we call humanity. And yet, Jesus still rides on. He rides on not into an uninhabited city, but a very much inhabited one. He rides into a city of with people from every tribe, every nation, every tongue. There are Greek people that come to see Jesus. The Romans are there with their Latin language. There are people from every class and socioeconomic status. And of course, where any type of people like that are gathered, there's also every sin imaginable in that city as well. And yet Jesus rides on. He knows full well what awaits Him later in the week. He can feel in His bones and His very being the nails and the whip and the scourge that is to come, and he still rides on. He knows of all the fearful priests, the disgruntled Pharisees. He knows of the political aspirations of the Romans. He knows of Mary the prostitute, Judas the betrayer, Levi the tax collector. He knows of all the city roughneck, rednecks, and no-necks. He knows of all the white-collar and blue-collar and even clerical-collar workers. He knows of the town gossiper and the playground bully, the destitute and the philosopher. He knows the local serial killer who hadn't been caught and the town druggie looking for a quick fix. And never once does Jesus get off the donkey, go to somebody in the crowd and say, you're not worthy of being here, get out of here. Never once does He take somebody and give them the boot down the road. He keeps riding on, never swerving, but always upward into the city itself. Because today, on Palm Sunday, we actually see what the kingdom of God looks like. 
And in case it's going to take any of you by surprise, it's full of sinners. And only sinners. This is why he came into the world, right? To die for sinners. So it should come as no surprise when there are actually sinners in his kingdom. Sinners who are crying out, Hosanna! Lord, save us! And his people, his sinners, they do exactly that. They cheer him on to his death. So cheer him on, sinners. You as people, you in the pew, you abusers, you fighters and quarrelers, liars and cheats, betrayers and slanderers, blasphemers, cowards, failures, you Christians. That's what the kingdom is comprised of. And he goes to fight for you. He doesn't go for the righteous. He isn't riding for those who are healthy. He rides for those who are sick and need a physician. He isn't going for Miss Goody Two-Shoes or Mr. Do-Right. He goes for sinners like you and I. So cheer him on. He's the only champion that you have left. This kind of reminds me, though, it, we just sang about cheering on our champion and ride on, ride on in majesty. And there's this one verse that makes me cringe. It's verse 3. Ride on, ride on in majesty. The angel armies of the sky look down with sad and wandering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. And maybe that's how we approach Holy Week. Oh, we have to be sad because Jesus is going to die. But the angels aren't sad. They're rejoicing. This is the reason that Jesus has come into the world. They are with the people cheerful, happy that Jesus has come. This is the Lamb. This is His ultimate fulfillment. And they cheer Him on. They minister to Him in the Garden of Gethsemane as He sweats drops of blood. Always pushing Him forward to the cross as His sinners do as well. So He goes to fight for you. He goes to die for you in all honesty. And so we cheer him on with the Hosanna. That's the prayer. That's the prayer of Palm Sunday. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, Lord save us. Lord save us now. Oh Lord, make us your heirs. Make us your people. Ride on, ride on, that in your blood we might live. Ride on. Take the bruises upon your body so that we can pass through. You alone are worthy of the Father. You alone are worthy of the staggering cost. You alone are worthy of all our genocides, homicides, and infanticides. You alone are worthy of all the deep, dark secrets of the heart that we have behind closed doors that no one else knows. Of our secret lusts and fantasies. You alone are worthy of our crimes. You alone are worthy of our broken homes and families. You alone are worthy. You alone can bear the cross. Ride on, ride on, because no one else will. Ride on, because we can't. Ride on, because without you, we're dead. That's really the Palm Sunday prayer. Hosanna. Lord, save us. And how will Jesus save? Through His cross. That's the prayer. That Hosanna is the one that Jesus heard not only on the first Palm Sunday, but He hears on this Palm Sunday as well. It's the prayer that He heard while He was riding on the donkey. It was the prayer that He heard while He carried His cross. It's the prayer that He heard over the clamor of the hammers driving nails into His hands and feet. Lord, save us. It's the prayer that he heard in the screaming and the bleeding and the sighing and in his dying breath. And guess what? He answered that prayer. He heard that prayer. And he made you his heir. So be of good cheer. He's done all things well. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen.